Hello, hello, beautiful friends. Welcome to my channel. It's Sean from Sean K Beauty. And today we are getting right into this video. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Sean. I bring science to beauty. We are doing the Truth Skincare series. This is about informing you to be a better informed consumer, not swaying you which way to go, whether you're going to say yay or nay. That's not what I'm here to do. So um, without further ado, let's get started. Are eye creams worth it? Um, and this has been an ongoing controversial topic for a very long time. Um, we've seen videos online where they say that eye creams are crap or why I stopped using eye creams, that kind of thing. But I, I really do want us to take videos that we see that have these particular topics with a grain of salt. Uh, because again, most of these um, individuals and not to knock them but they're not scientists they're not in the lab to actually see what's going on and though there are some products that are better than others to make a generalized blanketed statement like you know eye creams are crap or why don't use eye creams based off of the eye creams that they have experienced is incorrect right we know that there are moisturizers out there that are so watered down, they do nothing for the skin. And then there are other moisturizers that are really great products um, that we actually swear by, right? So if someone in, in a group has the watered down moisturizers and they've never experienced the really great hydrating moisturizers, is it fair for them to make a video that says all moisturizers are crap or all moisturizers I'm going to stop using because, or why I stop using moisturizers because of your bad experiences with the products that you've experienced. It's not a true statement. Um, so I want us to think about that the next time we watch videos like this, people who are, um, you know, really throwing blanketed umbrella terms out there and saying this is that because of this experience. So that's that's all I'm going to say to that. All right. So the key with going forward as an acute buyer that is being equipped with information is asking yourself several questions. And this is one that I want to pose to you. And that question is, are eye creams not worth it because of the mass majority that are saying it's not worth it? Is it really about the eye cream or is it about the ingredients that goes into the eye cream? And that's what I want us to start thinking about before we go buying or before we make decisions or we before we let an influencer or someone who's not a scientist sway you based off their bad experiences. My question would be to them, do you know what sort of ingredients constitutes a great eye cream? Um, because if you did, you probably would not have picked up the product that you did. And if you know your eye concern, then you would look for specific ingredients in that product that would help you with that con that eye concern let's get into this yes i'm saying that there are some eye creams that are not worth it and yes i am saying there are other eye creams that are so it's about ingredients so that's why i'm here to do this video today because we're going to talk about ingredients that goes into a really great eye cream and we're going to talk about the eye area specifically so you understand what it's doing or what it's not doing and why you need to look at ingredients before uh, going in and making a decision on whether or not you want to buy eye cream. Okay, so let's get started. So here's the thing, the eye area, very, very thin layer of skin that is different from that of the face. And dermatologists are now quickly jumping on board with the idea that eye creams necessitate specific um, concerns that a moisturizer on the face cannot do. Does that make sense? In fact, because the skin of the face is a lot more 
rigid. It can take a lot more um, aggressive actives than underneath the eye area. You really want to be careful about using, let's say, a moisturizer with salicylic acid and then taking that underneath the eye can really be aggressive depending on the concentration of salicylic acid that went into the moisturizer, which really the eye area would not be able to withstand, okay? It won't be able to deal with a strong uh, salicylic acid and especially a BHA that is a small molecule. Remember I mentioned that the smaller the molecule, the faster it, it will get into the skin. So BHAs like salicylic acid tend to be very, very small molecules. All right, the next thing we wanna look at is the eyes also can malfunction with their the ducts that either are the tear ducts or even the glands that work underneath the eye. So we have, we've had uh, videos where I've talked about, you know, baggy eyes or uh, videos that we talk about with, you know, wrinkles under the eyes or crow's feet. A lot of this happens whether it's hereditary or it happens from UV radiation. Um, but whatever the case is, your moisturizer is not targeting those specific concerns if you're using it under the eye. Another thing is, uh, I, you know, moisturizers for the eye area, so eye creams, tend to be a lot more emollient than that of a moisturizer for the face. When we're talking about Vaseline, Vaseline is an occlusive. It does not penetrate the skin. It gives you this uh, temporary fix of feeling like you're hydrated, but really and seriously, it just sits on top of the skin. So if you're using that underneath the eyes, please know that it's not penetrating into the skin deep enough to really bring in that hydration that you're looking for, okay? So we really need to get deep underneath the skin when we're talking about, you know, uh, crow's feet and deep wrinkles and extreme dryness underneath the eye area. We need something that's going to penetrate. Now, let's talk about some of those ingredients that's really going to help you target those specific um, eye concerns. All right, friends, so the first ingredient is hyaluronic acid. We've talked about hyaluronic acid so many times on so many videos, and it's because it actually works. It is a great humectant that is hygroscopic in nature, meaning that it pulls water from the atmosphere and gets it onto the skin. Uh, hyaluronic acid will bring that plumping and smoothness underneath the eye area. The great thing about hyaluronic acid is it naturally occurs in the body, so it's not like you're putting something foreign to the body underneath the eye area. This is one that, as we age, naturally, and we're exposed to UV radiation, hyaluronic acid levels tend to decline. So bringing in one into your skincare routine is really going to help to alleviate that imbalance that's happening and mitigate any redness, any irritation, and bring about that smoothness and that plumping and just that deep hydration that you need uh, to your eye area. So that is one of the ingredients that you wanna look for in an eye cream. Another one that will do a great job too is I, rem I did a video on La Mer and I We'll leave that down below. La Mer has a really great eye um, cream as well. And La Mer's backbone is sea kelp. And we talked about that being a really great uh, humectant that is even more um, of a great humectant than your hyaluronic acid. So there you go. If you can find something with sea kelp in it or seaweed and hyaluronic acid, then you're looking at you know, bringing that um, moisture underneath the eye area to help to plumpen up those fine lines and wrinkles and really bring about that smoothness and mitigating any irritation or redness that you're experiencing underneath the eye area. Another really great ingredient is neuropeptides. A lot of people would recommend retinol, um, but not everyone can handle retinol and based off my retinol video that I've done some, I think it was last year, some time back, it's been a lot of you that have 
experience the adverse reaction of retinol. I'm not pro-retinol on my channel, so you will not hear me promoting a lot of retinol products. So retinol is one that some people will recommend that you use under the, the eye area, but most people are not able to handle retinol. It's very aggressive. So I would say an alternative to that would be to go after a neuropeptide, which is a lot more gentler on the skin that promotes the elastin and the collagen levels that you need to bring a firmness happening underneath the eye area. And it's also going to help with that smoothness happening underneath the eye area as well. So you're looking for hyaluronic acid, your neuropeptides, your sea kelp. So those are three that I've given you so far. And I'm going to give you at least three more ingredients that you can add to your list. <laughs> All right, so this next ingredient is alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid is there to minimize pores. It is also great for smoothening out the skin and it is 400 times stronger than your vitamin C and your vitamin E. This is enriched with antioxidants to fight off those free radicals that wreak havoc on the skin. It's also a really great anti-inflammatory that's going to prevent any sort of blotchiness or any irritation that you're having underneath the eye area. So another really great one is caffeine. Caffeine actually and green tea uh, will constrict the blood vessels so that you don't have pooling happening underneath the eyes where you end up with the saggy eye. So caffeine is really great as a vasoconstrictor and also helping to ferment up that under eye area. So definitely you've got a, a good bit of ingredients that you're going to be going after when you pick up your next eye cream. <laughs> I wanted to bring this to your attention. Do you remember when folks were using like green tea bags under on the eyes? And again, I mentioned it's a, it's a vasoconstrictor, but it's also enriched with vitamin B12 and vitamin E. It actually unclogs the pores. And we want to think about that as well with unclogging pores. Um, another really key ingredient is literally going to be PPC. This is an ingredient that if you have extremely dry skin or dry under eyes, you, you definitely want to go after this because it's going to bring that deep hydration and smoothness to the skin. Remember I said that Vaseline is an occlusive. It's just going to lay on top of the skin, whereas PPC is an actual emollient. It's going to get into the deep layers of the skin. I also want to mention with your alpha lipoic acid, if you're one that suffers from you know puffiness under the eyes or dark circles you want to go after that key ingredient um, as well now caffeine is great for depuffing the eyes but really targeting those dark circles you want to go after that alpha lipoic acid that's going to give you duality it's going to help to depuff the eyes as well as deal with the dark circles under the eye now eye creams are one that i absolutely love the one that i'm using is from Chantecaille. it is the stress repair concentrate and i really do love it and i do see the benefits of it and if you have a long night it is one that works beautifully uh, so that you get up and you feel recharged and your eyes don't look dark and sink sunk in so um, if you want to try that one I will leave the link to that particular eye cream down below as well now in my next video definitely follow me because I will be talking about the best recommendations for you with eye creams so make sure you check out that video this is the true skincare series i didn't want to you know overwhelm you all of course you can go to your dermatologist they will assess the eye area to see if an eye cream would work best or if you should go after fillers um, or injectables that they actually do what they call fillers or you know if they have to use special lights to really help to mitigate your dry eye or your deep wrinkles or what, just to see how exacerbated your case is. But are eye creams worth it? Um, you be the judge of that. Again, the True Skincare series is to give you truth. It's not to sway you yay or nay. Understanding that it's not about the eye cream, it's about the ingredients in the eye cream that makes it worth it or not worth it. Just like it's the ingredients inside the moisturizer that would make it worth it or not worth it. Okay, so the discussion continues. Leave your questions down below. I look forward to hearing from you.